Good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I am Neeraj Jaipuria from BI Retail. Uh, quick show of hands. Uh, how many sitting here in the audience are retailers? That's a good number. All right. So uh, I spent 15 years of my life helping retailers make sense of data. And what I hear often, even as recently as yesterday, is uh, retailers telling me uh, the amount of time and money investment that we do in analytics is not giving us returns. So again, quick show of hands of those retailers who raise their hands. How many, and when I'm saying analytics, don't think of any high-end tool, even if you're doing reporting on Excel, that is analytics. So how many of you feel that you're not able to drive value from analytics at this moment? Again, quick show of hands. Okay, there's only one. So I need to learn from the other 99% who actually think that they're doing it well. But anyways, I've got a few tips and tricks here in a very short five minute uh, presentation. So uh, to begin with, I can't stress enough, all of us need to understand that analytics is not a destination, it is a journey, right? And uh, we've split this journey up into four stages. Uh, if you look at the red arrow line, what you would see is as you traverse through the journey, the value that you get out of each stage is exponentially incremental, not marginally incremental. So it is important at some point, all of us keep in mind, it may be a long-term vision, but keep in mind that we need to go through this journey. Uh, I'm going to talk about reactive, predictive, prescriptive, and transactive analytics very quickly in five minutes. So let's jump into this. So what is reactive analytics? This is something most easy to explain. All of us do that. We collect a lot of data. We take that data into our reports. It could be Excel. It could be any other tool. And we're looking at that data to find out what went right, what went wrong. And if things went wrong, how to solve it, right? Since we're looking at data of the past and we are reacting, that is why we typically call this reactive analytics. So all of us do reactive analytics. I'd like to just present a few tips and tricks on how to make reactive analytics better for you, right? And again, like I said, agnostic of any BI tool, I'm just talking about any tool that you can do reactive analytics on. So to explain this, uh, let me break up reactive analytics as a three-step process, right? You first look at data to find out what went right and what went wrong. That is what we call discovery. And for those things that went wrong, you go down the path and try to find out why it went wrong. That's what we call root cause analysis. And once you found out what went wrong and why it went wrong, you would come up with some methods or actions to take to set it right, and that's what we call inferencing, right? So what I have observed retailers making a mistake with, first step is they tend to merge discovery and root cause analysis, right? We've seen retailers who've got about 100 columns across on an Excel sheet and probably 5,000 rows in an Excel sheet. They've got all this data in and they're trying to find issues in that data. Now, there's no genius in this room who can actually look at 50 million cells at one time and figure out what went wrong. So what do we suggest? We suggest that you break up discovery and root cause into two separate steps. So this is what you've seen, what a lot of retailers use. We want to separate discovery and root cause analysis. So begin with a dashboard, start with a top-down approach. At any point in your reporting or analytics, if you've got too much data on your screen, just take that as a red flag, you're making a mistake somewhere. So you start with a dashboard, you've got 10, 15 KPIs, you've got your red, amber, green uh, uh, flagging out there, and wherever you see a problem, adopt a click and drill approach to get to one level of detail and then further next level and next level. And that's how you do your discovery. So this is tip number one. Please separate your discovery and your root cause analysis phase. All right? I'd like to spend a minute on inferencing. So what is inferencing? Let me explain this with an example. 
uh, I know the font is very small, but uh, I'll tell you what this is. Let's say you're trying to find out which items are selling well, which items are overstocked, understocked. Uh, so you look at a store-wise, item-wise report where you have your sales, you've got your stock. Now, uh, you could have a problem if you're not having enough sales. Or you could have a problem that you've got too much stock. Uh, the way you would look, read a, this report is go top down and left to right, look at each cell, and in your mind, you are actually doing some micro inferencing. So you could say that if my sales is high, but my stock is also high, I need to reduce the stock. If my sales is low, maybe I need to remove this item from this store, right? This is micro inferencing that we all do unconsciously when we're looking at reports. Now, when you're doing this micro inferencing for the first row, second row, fifth row, your mind is still going to allow you to do it. But you go down to the 10th row, 100th row, believe me, it is very tiring, right? So what do we do? We actually help you build the same rules of micro inferencing into the tool that you are using. Now look at the report where the last column is automatically calling out the action that you need to do. Just this last column we've seen with retailers actually reduce the time of analyzing and actioning a report like this from 20 minutes down to two minutes. That's really what you need to get at. You need to get to the action, not look at data, right? <clears throat> All right, so, so much about reactive. I have very little time, so I'm rushing through, but I'm happy to talk subsequently. What is predictive? Uh, I am going to oversimplify something, right? So. These rules of micro-inferencing where you're deciding what to do based on what happened in the past, similarly with a small tweak or change, can be applied to predict what will happen in the future. So very simply, you could say uh, which items in which store are going to run out of stock next week, right? And again, I'm oversimplifying it, but let me explain this with an example. You can look at the sale of each item in a store over the next last 100 days, let's say you sold 100 pieces in 100 days, it comes to an average of selling a, a, a rate of sale of one piece a day. And now if you have five pieces in stock today, it simply straight away tells you that this stock is going to last for five days. If you have 100 pieces, you've got 100 days of stock. Now, is predictive analytics as simple as this? Well, this is the starting point, and this absolutely qualifies for the start of predictive analytics. Of course, retail is a little more complicated, and we use a fair amount of data science, et cetera, to get more ac accurate about predictive. But this is a journey that you can start even without involving data science at some point. So now, what happens to prescriptive? If predictive analytics is telling you what is going to happen, Prescriptive analytics is telling you how to circumvent an exception, right? So I'll continue with the same example. You've discovered which item in which store is going to run out of stock. What are you going to do after that, right? So you would probably look at seeing which of these items are available in your various DCs or warehouses, and you would try to supplement it, replenish it from this. Now. The complication, the simple, uh, the simple scenario is if you have enough in your warehouse and DC to fulfill each requirement of each and every store, but that never happens. So if you have a demand of 100 pieces across your 100 stores and you have only 30 pieces in your warehouse, one has to decide which 30 stores would get it. And then those 70 stores that don't get it, what are you going to send to them as a replacement item, right? This is a little more complex. We use uh, algorithms and decision trees to arrive at this, but as we are moving up the chain, prescriptive analytics is actually saving you time to decide what to do. It is using the same rules that you would do manually to make that decision and uh, you know, giving you the output for direct action. So if predictive analytics is giving you that direct action, what then is transactive analytics? Again, continuing with the same example, predictive analytics told me that from this DC, this item sent to these stores, from this DC sent these items to those stores, right? What do you do next as a retailer? 
or let's say you're the category head or the merchandiser, you've got this out from predict, uh, prescriptive analytics, you will then probably open your email, copy all items that need to be sourced from DC1, paste it there, send it as an email to the manager of DC1, do it for DC2, et cetera. That's a lot of manual work. And uh, it can get cumbersome. Uh, so what BI Retail does is we've introduced transactive analytics, which is a proprietary tool, which actually takes away this manual burden for you. Straight out, the output of a prescriptive analytics is action through robotic processes, actioned to whatever you may desire. It's completely customizable. So it can send the right emails to the right 50 DC managers. It can even actually write transfer, it can create transfer order transactions into your underlying ERP system. So sky's the limit in thinking what it can do, right? I still say that even if you manage to send those emails manually, how do you keep track of whether that transfer happened? Because in the end, we've got to realize that all this data and all these emails may not solve the problem for you. Business will improve only when that transfer actually took place. So transactive analytics also takes care of that. Today, 19th April, you sent out 50 instructions. Two days later on 21st April, Transactive analytics will automatically check how many of those did not get fulfilled. And the ones that did not get fulfilled, it can start an escalation matrix on 21st. It will remind the manager again. If it's still not happened on 23rd, it can escalate it to operations head and so on and so on. So that is the entire bundle because we believe that unless action happens and it's carried out, everything that you did before that in analytics is a waste. Right? Uh, again, I'm rushing through this. Uh, uh, just want to say that if you feel analytics is not doing good for you, I'll tell you how to look at this. Think of it as solving a jigsaw puzzle. Now, if you're solving a jigsaw puzzle and for whatever reason you happen to sit sideways and try and solve the puzzle, it's going to be extremely challenging for you. So what we do for retailers is we come in, we help align your perspective first. Secondly, we look at the pieces that you've already put in place and help you remove those pieces that are wrongly put in place. And finally, we put, help you put in the missing pieces in place to finally finish the jigsaw puzzle. And I'm not saying we do this because we are smarter than you. We do this because we've been doing this for 15 years now, only working with retailers and only working in the space of analytics. So we've learned from you and that's what we bring back. All right, that was my short presentation. Thank you everybody, I'm available in case somebody needs to talk. Testers, thank you so much. Complex, we use uh, algorithms and decision trees to arrive at this, but as we are moving up the chain, prescriptive analytics is actually saving you time to decide what to do. It is using the same rules that you would do manually to make that decision and uh, you know, giving you the output for direct action. So if predictive analytics is giving you that direct action, what then is transactive analytics? Again, continuing with the same example, predictive analytics told me that from this DC, this item sent to these stores. From this DC, send these items to those stores, right? What do you do next as a retailer? Or let's say you're the category head or the merchandiser. You've got this out from predict, uh, prescriptive analytics. You will then probably open your email, copy all items that need to be sourced from DC1, paste it there, send it as an email to the manager of DC1, do it for DC2, et cetera. That's a lot of manual work. And uh, it can get cumbersome. Uh, so what BI Retail does is we've introduced transactive analytics, which is a proprietary tool, which actually takes away this manual burden for you. Straight out, the output of a prescriptive analytics is actioned through robotic processes, actioned to whatever you may desire. It's completely customizable, so it can send the right emails to the right 50 DC managers. It can even actually write transfer, it can create transfer order transactions into your underlying ERP system. So sky's the limit in thinking what it can do, right? 
I still say that even if you manage to send those emails manually, how do you keep track of whether that transfer happened? Because in the end, we've got to realize that all this data and all these emails may not solve the problem for you. Business will improve only when that transfer actually took place. So transactive analytics also takes care of that. Today, 19th April, you sent out 50 instructions. Two days later on 21st April, transactive analytics will automatically check how many of those did not get fulfilled. And the ones that did not get fulfilled, it can start an escalation matrix on 21st. It will remind the manager again. If it still not happened on 23rd, it can escalate it to operations head and so on and so on. So that is the entire bundle because we believe that unless action happens and it's carried out, everything that you did before that in analytics is a waste. Right? Uh, again, I'm rushing through this. Uh, uh, just want to say that if you feel analytics is not doing good for you, I'll tell you how to look at this. Think of it as solving a jigsaw puzzle. Now, if you're solving a jigsaw puzzle, and for whatever reason, you happen to sit sideways and try and solve the puzzle, it's going to be extremely challenging for you. So what we do for retailers is we come in, we help align your perspective first. Secondly, we look at the pieces that you've already put in place and help you remove those pieces that are wrongly put in place. And finally, we put, help you put in the missing pieces in place to finally finish the jigsaw puzzle. And I'm not saying we do this because we are smarter than you. We do this because we've been doing this for 15 years now, only working with retailers and only working in the space of analytics. So we've learned from you, and that's what we bring back. All right, that was my short presentation. Thank you, everybody. I'm available in case somebody needs to talk.